Hi, today we will be discussing livestock genetic resources. It is estimated that more than 7 million species are existing on our, our earth and of that 7 million species, if you see there are more than 40 species or of animal and uh, bird population that has been domesticated. But if you see there are only 14 species are involved in production, livestock production and that is responsible for food and agriculture. And this livestock is very, very essential component of our agro ecosystem and this also is responsible for furthering our economy, economy of agricultural economy it is very, very important thing this livestock resources. And also if you see these farmers, the marginal farmers and small farmers, they are totally dependent on diversified farming and this livestock forms an important component of diversified agro ecosystem. We will see how this livestock is important in this particular lecture. The livestock what we have discussed it is very, very important thing, but this livestock genetic resources are at crossroad. Why? We will see the first and foremost important reason is this animal resources what we are talking is with the small farmers, marginal farmers, landless laborers and these poor people are very highly vulnerable to the externalities, to the management pressure, market pressure and because of this pressure many breeds what they are having that is endangered and at any time that is can be completely vanished. So what I want to say is that this particular animal genetic resources lying with the farmers, small farmers, they are highly vulnerable for the pressure. The second important reason is the small little changes that is taking place in the production or product needs, disease occurrence, parasite spread, because of these reasons many indigenous breeds are threatened severely. The past, in the past if you see the pattern of livestock management is very, very unique. Traditionally in the livestock management practices, even the breeding practice or a, a pasture management or everything is like a social activity. And this is what happening in the, the past villages. But now this tradition is slowly and steadily we are vanishing it. And this is a very, very important thing. Why? Because, because of that thing, the valuable resources in the form of animal genetic resources that is slowly vanishing. It is in sooner or later it will be extinct. So we are in a high time that we need to take precautionary measures to safeguard the animal genetic resources. The next point is the about 75 percentage of livestock genetic resources in our country are in the non-descript category. When I say non-descript category, there is lot of variation, phenotypic variation, morphological variation that is existing in the genetic population, that is existing in the livestock population. Because of the variation, we cannot categorize that particular population in a particular breed. It is difficult. So why because, why this is happened? This is because of uh, not traditional breeding ag practices, it has been uncontrolled breeding, localized condition. Because of this reason, the 75 percentage of livestock, whatever we are having, it is non-descript category. It is very, very vulnerable. So that we need to take into account quickly. We need, we are stepping further into what is that livestock genetic resources. For that to understand, we need to understand what exactly the breed means. The breed, it is defined as a group of animals that as a result of breeding, and selection have certain distinguishable characteristics. Based on this definition, the first and foremost important point is the breeding and selection process. It is a time consuming process. For millions of years, this breeding and selection has taken place and that has resulted into a group of animals and those animals are having characteristics, unique characteristics and those characteristics are definable, are very unique, distinguishable. So this is a basic definition of breed. And this breed, if you see, they are very, very unique because of their characteristics, morphological or morphometric performance characteristics also. They have been grouped in such a way. And second important point as far as breed is concerned, the geographical isolation. Geographical isolation, just because of geographical isolation, the breed is having a unique characteristics. Next definition as far as the, uh, the livestock genetic resources are concerned, that is a type. It means that the characteristics, it mean, refers to the characteristics of structure and form that make an animal more valuable for the production of milk, meat, wool. In other words, for food and agriculture. These are the characteristics. These characteristics help the animal to have an adaptability, adaptability to a local condition, environmental condition. 
and uh, we need to understand what are the characteristics, breed characteristics. I said that breed characteristics are very, very unique. These characteristics distinguishes that particular breed from others of that same species. It's all very, very unique characteristics and it can be a, a morphological feature. It can be a, a kind of a horn or a nose or the frontal part of the body, animal body. See, every, it's a lot of characteristics are there. These characteristics are defining characteristics. It will distinguish one breed from the other. And as far as the biodiversity, livestock biodiversity in our, our country is concerned, we can boast definitely because there are 61 breeds of cattle. We in our country, we have 61 breeds of cattle, 19 breeds of buffalo, 29 breeds of goats, 59 breeds of sheep, 9 breeds of horses, 3 of donkey, 3 breeds of pigs and 18 breeds of poultry. So much so that this diversity and this, what all the breeds I am talking about, we are having such a wide, wide, wide kind of diversity as far as animal population is concerned. And this particular population we need to understand for, with respect to the uh, people, local people, with respect to the economy, with respect to the sustainability of agroecosystem. And this breed or this biodiversity is very, very essential for the survival of, of any species for that matter. Because there is a genetic variation that is existing within the breed. And between the breed also there is a variation and this necessary, this particular genetic variation is very, very necessary for the survival of the species because this species, what we are talking, it is a product of millions of years of evolution and that evolution has taken place within a specific ecological niche. When I say within a specific ecological niche, it means that the conditions, the environmental conditions was driving for the evolution. The evolution can be a natural phenomenon or it can be a man-made phenomenon. So both have simultaneously or concurrently they are responsible for the evolution of a breed or of a, a crop for that matter. So there are a lot of indigenous breeds in our country. The indigenous livestock what we are having, they have a specific role to play, you know. And those because of that specific role, for that purpose only they have been evolved, they have been bred for it. And the utility, it is very, very symptomatic of the region region specific utility. See, so for example, in the western part of our country, the, the demand, because the country may be drought, it's known for drought condition and uh, the kind of desertic environment. And in that condition, the main purpose would be milk production. And so based on the region, based on the economic condition, based on the environmental condition, the utility also differs. And each and every breed in that particular region, if you see, they are very, very having unique traits, unique traits. And we'll go one by one the uh, population, livestock population. The first and foremost is the cattle. It is the scientific name is Boast Taurus. In India, we are having a definite, definitely we can see that it is distinguishable. That is 37 breeds we are having it. And it has been evolved because of certain economic values and cultural values. And these breeds are having, I said that they are having uh, definable characteristics. And these characteristics are very, very essential because it is for the purpose of food or for the purpose of agriculture, for f meeting the needs of the human beings. It may be uh, uh, for food purpose or for any other purposes, even the uh, sustenance of the uh, livelihood, sustenance of the people and also the agroecosystem also if because the byproduct of cattle, for example, a cattle uh, dung. So this can be very well uh, plowed into the land and that will increase the fertility of the soil. So what I want to say is that this cattle population or for that matter livestock is an essential component of an agroecosystem. And this cattle, what we are discussing, it is very, it's having a very distinct features as far as the phenotype is concerned and the production parameters. When I say production parameters, it's the meal production, the drought power. So these are all the basic things. And this breed characteristics is highly influenced by the local climate, climate condition, the selection pressure, it's our nature or the human beings. And the management pressure, because management, the farmers, they are the prime stakeholders and they influence the breeding characteristics. And as far as the spread, the geographical spread of the cattle breeds are concerned, the f uh, we'll see one by one. The first and foremost thing is that in the region of high altitude region, the temperate alpine region, the cattle breeds are small size. They are very, very small animal. But of course, the diversity is very, very vast. But we are largely, largely ignoring it. The purpose is why we are, we are ignoring it? Because the production, the milk production is very, very less. Since the milk production is very, very less, it is not, I mean, amenable or uh, for increasing or in other words, we are not, this is not contributing much to the economy. That is the reason why this particular breeds that is thriving, that is distributed in a high altitude or temperate alpine region, they are not being uh, used properly, but they have a lot of potential to do it. And as far as the foothill regions are concerned, 
there are the stature of the animal if you look at it they are medium stature but as far as the uh, high altitude region the cattle population there are very very small stature as far as the cattle breeds as the foothills are concerned there is a lot of variation between the male and female the purpose of male population is they are used for drought purpose as far as the female is concerned the ephors are used for milk production there are there are few uh, cattle breeds are there very popular one uh, for example the kerry garda and ponwar it is uh, present it is distributed in the uttarakhand region as far as the siri breed is concerned that is found in the sikkim at darjeeling hills and as far as the northwestern plains are concerned, I was just mentioning about it, how it is important that uh, plains are concerned and it is known for the drought feature, it is known for the fragility, it fragile ecosystem, the ecosystem is very, very fragile, it is highly vulnerable for any disturbances and be why because, because of the climatic condition, because the precip precipitation, it is very, very less. In that condition, what I want to say is that this system, it is highly disturbed and it is very, very vulnerable. In that region, the people who were living there, they would have focused for what? They would have bred, evolved a uh, particular uh, cattle breed for milk production because the milk generation, uh, milk production in that particular region, it is used for furthering the human consumption or it is a part and parcel of the human food chain. So, the basic purpose based on the purpose, based on the need, the evolution or the breeding that is activity is taking place. There are a lot of bre breeds uh, are there. The first and foremost is the Sahiwal. It has been in the Montgomery district of Pakistan. It has been in that particular tract. And there are Thar Parker. Thar Parker is a very, very important breed in the Northwestern Plain. They are milch breed, highly good breeds. Gir in Gujarat and Rati. Rati, you know, there is a, it has come from a, a pastoral a tribal a community that is called Rat. And they bred this particular Rati. And this particular, it is having an, what you call, is having all the inheritance, the features of the Sahiwal, Tharpakar, Gir, and everything has combinedly that has resulted to this particular Rati breed. And Ariana breed and Kankrich. These all are milch breeds. These are mil very good breeds. When I say very good breeds, because we need to understand why it is. From the point of the production, milk production is very good. And another thing is that these breeds are thriving in extreme environmental conditions. I am saying the fragile ecosystems. And since they are in the fragile ecosystems, the kind of feed, the kind of fodder, they are very poor. So these particular breeds are having a power to convert. The conversion, feed conversion is very, very good in this kind of breeds. And for that matter, these breeds has to be taken care of and they are wonderful because they are providing, they are aiming to provide nutritional food security. They are aiming to provide the soil security. They are aiming to provide livelihood security of the farmers. And as far as the indo gangetic plains are concerned, this particular region is known for irrigation, irrigation facilities, and it is known for intensive agriculture practices. So, since it is known for intensive agriculture practices, the main purpose, the focus of the farmers is to go for dual purpose breeds. Dual purpose, it is for the drought purpose and also for the milk production. So, this will lead to a condition, what? It can lead to a, a diversification of agriculture in this particular region. And as far as the cattle breeds in the central part of our country and the Deccan plateau is, con plateau is concerned, the, con the region is known for the humid condition, hot, it is very, very unique. And also very importantly, the soil formed under this condition of hot and humid condition, what will be the soil? The soil will be black in nature. It is a very, very hard. The soil black, it is a black soil, I say it is a clay soil. So it is having its own unique conditions. And under this unique condition, soil condition, you know, it is very difficult to plow. And for that, we need to go for agriculture, if you need to go for agricultural activity, for plowing activity, what kind of breed is required? The first and foremost, the aim, the purpose, the goal of the farmers in this particular region or any human being in this particular region is to develop a drought cattle breeds and they should be very heavy, they should be gigantic because they need the power to till the soil. And that is what it is very, very important thing as far as the central integral plateau region is concerned. There are examples of many to, ex to cite a few. It is Kankata, Malvi in the uh, central part and the Gaulo region, Kilari in the case of uh, Maharashtra region, Halikar, Amrit, Mahal, Krishna Valley, that is in Karnataka region. Kangaim is very, very known in uh, Tamil Nadu region. So these are the very good breeds in uh, cattle breeds that is in the central and Deccan plateau region. And as far as the eastern and coastal region is concerned, uh, it is very humid, but the soil is very, very fertile because it is having a, uh, it is all the delta region you will be finding in the eastern and coastal region. So, soil, as far as the soil is concerned, it is very, very good, it is fertile. So, in that particular region, there are few breeds, very, very few breeds are there. That is Bachaur in Bihar, Pungadur in um, Andhra Pradesh, Umblacheri in Tamil Nadu, Vechur in Kerala. There are many breeds, but the few I have mentioned here. 
And as far as the, in nutshell, if I wanted to say is that the milch breeds, as far as uh, cattle milch breeds are concerned, the main is the Sahiwal Reds in the Gir Tarpakar Rati. And Rati, I mentioned, just mentioned, it's an admixture of uh, inheritance from Sahiwal Reds in the Gir, the Tarpakar. These all have been admixture. They, it has been inherited from this particular thing. There are many more, are there? Angol is also a very, very famous thing. It's otherwise called as Nellur, Nellur breed. And when you see cattle breed, the exotic breeds are very, very important thing. Exotic breed, Alston Frisian from Netherlands, Jersey, it has been distributed in Europe and uh, America. Brown Swiss, Swiss is from Switzerland, it's a mountainous region, red Danish breed. And this has been exotic breeds, we are using it for cross breed, breeding purposes or breeding purposes. Because these are highly potential, highly potential as far as the milk production is concerned. So this particular trait, this particular char characteristic has to be inculcated in our particular breed. We, 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 our breed is? Fertility wise it is very less and the milk production wise it is also very less and most of the population is non-descript. So for that purpose what we have done, we have used this all station, all, uh, sorry, exotic breeds for breeding purpose. There are many varieties, the current Swiss is very very famous which has been a product because we have used brown Swiss and current freeze it is a very important thing boy because we have used all Swiss freeze for that purpose and that has led to current freeze. It is a very wonderful breed and freeze well again we have used all Swiss freeze, that freeze wall is a very important thing. Sunandini is very, very famous because it's a product of brown Swiss, uh, it's a breed uh, from uh, Switzerland and non nondescript uh, population in Kerala. Sunandini is a very, very good breed that is performing very good in Kerala region. And as far as the next livestock is concerned, it's buffalo, the scientific name is Bubelis Bubelis. And the population wise, it is 86 million. We have in our country, we have 86 million. And it contributes 54 percentage of world's milk production. It's a very, very important uh, livestock as far as the milk production is concerned. It is the purpose is, it's multipurpose. Because when I say it's multipurpose, milk production, drought power and what not, meat, everything is, uh, we are getting it from this particular buffalo. And uh, since I have talked about milk production, it is very, very essential for the nutritional security. And I told this buffalo, it is a poor man's uh, livestock. When I say poor man's, because it gives employment opportunity. It provides the livelihood security for the poor farmers or the landless laborers or the small and marginal farmers. So it's a part and parcel of this, um, this buffalo. And this adds to an one important point. It is a part of the cultural fabric of our society this buffalo or for that matter the cattle and buffalo population livestock and the, as far as the divisions are concerned there are two important divisions one is the reverend buffaloes which is having 50 chromosomes and mostly the reverend buffaloes you'll be finding the their uh, dairy they, for the purpose the basic purpose is dairy and these wallow in the river water the, the fresh water bodies and the other end the swam buffaloes which is having a lesser chromosome it is used for drought purpose and meat purpose the, um, there are many examples are there as far as the swam buffaloes are concerned and quickly, if you see the milch breeds, uh, buffalo breeds are concerned, Mura, that is very famous in case of uh, Ariana. Uh, the milk production is very, very high in case of Mura. Badwari, it's known for the high fat percentage. It's more, it's uh, almost 8 to 13 percentage of fat you'll be getting from the ba Badawari region. That is in the UP and Madhya Pradesh, Madhya Etawa, uh, Mainpuri region. This Badawari, that's an important buffalo breed. And other breeds are there, that is in the Gujarat, in Gujarat, in the uh, northern part of Gujarat, Jafar Badi, the central part of Gujarat, Mesana, and the southern part of Gujarat, you'll be finding Surti. That has been distribution, the properly distributed. And as far as the Nagpuri breed is concerned, it is in the uh, Akola region and Nagpur region of Maharashtra. And Neeli Ravi, it's a very, very important breed, buffalo breed, that is in the Satilaj uh, river basin, Neeli Ravi, Rabi. And Toda, that is a beautiful and wonderful breed in Nilgiris region in the southern part of our country. And uh, next livestock is a sheep, so always Aris is the scientific name, and the purpose is very wide, because it has been used for uh, for the fleas or the came for uh, our food purpose, food purpose, meat purpose and menu. Sheep menu is also very, very important thing as far as the uh, soil fertility is concerned because it has been part and parcel of the integrated farming system. And this sheep is known to thrive in the diverse environmental conditions. It would be harsh, even the wastelands. So this particular sheep can uh, very well sustain in the wastelands also. It can take up the weeds also. So in a way what happened, the resources, whatever the scarce resources that is available, it is very efficiently used. It is converted efficiently by going for the sheep population. And the population wise is concerned, India, we, are, we can boast it is, uh, we are having around 61.46 million 
population and the breeds are very unique because we are having others it is categorized properly the performance wise also the morphological wise also there are 57 breeds in our country and the indigenous breeds I said that it is very very thriving in the, uh, uh, in the very localized environments or the extreme environments and also the resistance it is having resistance to the pest and diseases it is having having the tolerance to the drought condition and the diet conversion is a very very uh, another unique phenomenon of the sheep breeds and the population is very very diverse why because the fleas it is producing the fleas it is a fiber it is a fiber the diameter it is producing it is more, less than 25 microns so thin you know just imagine it and the variation is very very wide and this diverse population of uh, sheep is very very important part of uh, our livestock e economy. And as far as the breeds are concerned in the north temperate region a very important thing is the migration is a very very important activity as far as sheep um, bre breeding is concerned or sheep management is concerned and the uh, uh, varieties that, that is breeds in the, the Kashmir region that is Punchi, Karna, Kashmir Valley these are the important sheep breeds that is in the Kashmir Valley and it is known for the colored fleece, fleece is very very important thing other breeds are Gurej, Gadi, Bakerwala is very another important uh, uh, breeds of uh, sheep and Rampur, Bushar is in uh, Imachal Pradesh. And this is all known for one important thing is migration activity. When I say migration, in the during the winter season, the, the flock owners, what they will do, they will bring the breed or the population down the hills because when the severe winter, they cannot thrive in the uh, higher hilltops. And this uh, one important thing as far as sheep breeds are concerned, we have introduced a Russian Merino and Rambolet. These two, because of the introduction of these Merino, basically the purpose is uh, for wool purpose. And because of that thing what happened there was a lot of uh, you know uh, problem as for, uh, for the traditional indigenous uh, sheep breeds. But still what happened one important thing I wanted to mention because of the introduction there was an uh, you know we have developed a Kashmir Merino which is known for high wool yield and the quality of the yield the wool that is very very fine in the uh, that is a very important thing as far as the sheep breeds are concerned. And one important thing I wanted to say is that in the dry western region of our country the sheep, uh, sheep population is slowly and steadily it is declining the basic purpose is the kind of activity kind of uh, agriculture because more of uh, sedentary agriculture that is what we are moving towards sedentary agriculture wherein we earlier they were practicing migratory uh, and people were you know pastoral uh, tribes they were involved in this kind of uh, sheep uh, breeding purposes sheep maintenance. So what I want to say is that in the dry western region the sheep population is declining very fast. And uh, to may mention a few uh, breeds, Nali, uh, Lohi, Munjal. The Munjal is a very, very important breed, which is a, uh, which has been product of uh, cross between Nali and Lohi. And Isar Dale. Isar Dale is a because it's again a product of uh, Chokla Eves and Merino Rams. It is Isar Dale is a very known breed in Isar region, in the Haryana region. And uh, when you see in the southern plateau region, southern plateau region, there are one important breed that I wanted to mention. That is the Deccani breed. And this Deccani breed is very, very unique, and it has been very well distributed in the southern plateau region of our country. And this Deccani breed, on selective breeding, we have developed one important strain that is Sangamneri strain, which is having a superior fleece. And one more thing, as far as the uh, Karnataka region is concerned, the one Mandia, that is a mutton type Mandia breed, is very famous. And on intensive selection or over the Mahandia breed, uh, breed, we have developed a Banur, that is another breed that is also known for the mutton, the purpose I am seeing. The next important livestock is the goat, goat sorry, goat and the, the scientific name is Capra ircus. And it has been thriving in the arid, semi-arid mountainous region, the population of uh, goat in India is 127 million. And uh, it is known for the animal protein, provides a lot of animal protein, it is very, very essential because the kind of milk that it is providing, it is having a nutrition quality and also it is having a lot of, you know, other uh, pharmaceutical values also. And uh, other products of uh, goat is the fiber, skin, drought power. This uh, goat is used as a drought, you know, uh, drought power in the highlands. And I told you, may, many times I told you that it is very, very essential because it provides livelihood security for the poor farmers. And the very important breed as far as uh, uh, breeds of goat is concerned, Changdani, it is a very, very important breed. And and Chegu breeds. It is provides you know Pashmina fibers, fibers. It is a very, very important breed, uh, the goat breed. And other breeds are there that is uh, basically it is for the milk purpose or meat purpose. Jamnopari it is a very, very famous breed uh, of goat, Barbari Beetle. Jamnopari is again is a very, very famous one, a breed of uh, goat. And uh, of course, there are a lot of exotic uh, milch goat breeds are there. One is Alpine. Alpine is from France and Sanen. Sanen is from uh, Sanen Valley of Switzerland. Togenberg. Togenberg is also from Switzerland. Togenberg Valley. And Anglo-Numian. Um, Anglo-Numian is a very, very important thing because it has been produced because using the uh, Nubian. Nubian from Egypt and um, Jamna Pari and also the uh, English type also. These are all the exotic uh, milch 
goat breeds. But the point, uh, what, what, what I want to say is that we need to use this milch breed for our purpose because cr uh, cross breeding purpose. But the kind of uh, activity or kind of breeding, whatever it was, uh, not of success. It's a limited success was there. But still, the, for the uh, point of view of the production is concerned, these exotic milch breeds are known for higher production and quality, quality also. And uh, if you see this particular livestock, when I was talking about it, it's a very, very important thing. I've talked about the uh, cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, and everything. But importantly, uh, one uh, group of animal that is called pack animals. It includes a group of animals because this pack animals is a very, very important thing because uh, as far as the evolution, man, human beings evolution is concerned, these pack animals also evolved simultaneously because they have helped so much so for their generations together for the, of human beings. So what I want to say is that these pack animals are under a severe stress. When I say pack animal, I'm talking about the camel, I'm talking about the Ukraines, I'm talking about the donkeys, I'm talking about the horses, Mithun, Yak. So these are the pack animals. So these pack animals are very, very important thing, but they are under severe pressure of what? Pre pressure of urbanization, pressure of industrialization, pressure of what? What not? They have even the communication because of this all the problems these pack animals are under severe stress. Their existence is under stress. The, uh, we need to take a proper measure. We can think about uh, developing a recreation activity, tourism, sports tourism is possible. You can, or population I'm talking about. So you can use that, those kind of uh, animals for uh, kind of, uh, you know, to, for example, camel. De this is like, a, you know, it's a desert animal because it's kind of a ship of a desert. It's a very, very unique one, this uh, camel. Why can't use it for, uh, uh, recreation activity, tourist purpose. So by that way, what I want to say is that these animals, pack animals, also repository of valuable services. So they have to be conserved. And that is a key thing as far as uh, the pack animals are concerned. Next important thing is the animal production system. When I say animal production system, I've talked about the diversity. I was talking about different uh, livestock population. These di livestock population has to be brought together in a way that this animal husbandry and agricultural or crop husbandry has to be synchronously taken for forward. When I say synchronously, I'm talking about the integrated farming system. When I say integrated farming system, because there is a kind of integration, because every product of uh, uh, particular, uh, for example, a livestock a product, for example, a menu that has to be used for the product, uh, increasing the productivity of the soil. That kind of inter integration is there. When I say integration, the system, it is of uh, what you call highest efficiency is there in biogeochemical cycling of nutrients and also highest efficiency as far as the production is concerned. Integrated farming system is a key thing and that is the best possible way where, where we can improve the uh, income of the farmers, we can improve the um, uh, sustainability of the agro ecosystem, what not, everything is possible. So animal production system has to be taken care of. And second important thing as far as the uh, livestock genetic resources is concerned, I said that non descriptive 75 percentage of livestock population is non descriptive These populations, these genetic resources has to be collected properly because we need to conserve it for the posterity. These genetic resources because, for example, I was talking about a goat or sheep, goat population for example, the indigenous traditional, indigenous breeds they have valuable genes for resistance, resistance to diseases, resistance or drought, uh, for example, tolerance to drought. So what I want to say is that these are the valuable, they have all the valuable genes. They have to be conserved very, very well because that is a basic thing. That is what we need to do it. And once we conserve it, we can use it sustainably. When I say sustainable use, because this livestock resources having multitude of uh, uses it is providing to the human beings. And when I talk about the kind of demand for the animal protein, it's very, very essential. So this livestock population has to be conserved so much so that because uh, all the possible measures in a war footing stage, we have to take it. That is then only it is possible we can conserve it and we can use it for improving our diet or we can uh, to achieve the food and nutritional security. Thank you.